Hello, I'm Al Holtham. Welcome to my workshop where today I'm going to show you a brilliant jig for sharpening twist drills on your Tormek water cool grinder. Although most of us are happy to invest quite heavily in equipment for sharpening the majority of hand tools, you only have to look around here to see that, the humble twist drill is often overlooked and we tend to soldier on with blunt and inaccurate bits mainly I think because the complex geometry on the point makes them very difficult to sharpen by hand unless you're really skilled. The DBS 22 makes it so easy to produce precise cutting edges on twist drills at a variety of different point and clearance angles and of course with the DBS 22 you have all the advantages of the Tormek wet grinding system so there's no danger of overheating you're not going to get micro cracks on the cutting edge or draw the temper. However, the one real advantage is you can now create a bit with a four facet cutting edge with a single central point rather than the chisel point of a conventionally ground two facet bit. Let me show you the difference. This is a standard two facet bit and if you look closely you can see the two facets result in a chisel point. Compare this with a four facet bit which as you can see has a single central point and this will stop it walking when you first touch it to the work particularly if it's a very hard piece. How many times have you tried to start a conventional drill only to have it scoot sideways when you first touch it to the work? That just doesn't happen with a four facet bit and its central point. It also requires a lot less force to get it started, which minimises overheating and prolongs the cutting life. So this is a DBS 22. I must admit when I first got it, I thought, oh, this looks like it's going to be really complicated and fiddly to set up. But honestly, it really isn't. It's actually very, very quick. But if you do get stuck, there's a really good instruction manual with it. As with all Tormek products, the jig is beautifully engineered. Just look at the quality of the machining and the castings and these components. And there are gauges and templates for all the necessary settings. And to my mind, this is actually the key. This sort of quality is essential to ensure that the two cutting edges are perfectly matched, or you're wasting your time if you want the finished bit to drill a precisely sized and straight hole. You're even supplied with a magnifier to help you set up the smaller size bits because this jig will actually handle bits from 3 millimeters up to 22 millimeters. That's 1 8 of an inch up to 7 8 of an inch. And what's more, the jig will fit any Tormek machine. So if you've got an older model, don't worry, the DBS 22 will still fit. So let's have a look at the jig in some detail. This is the drill bit holder. See winding the knob in and out, clamps the drill bit no matter what size in the jaws there. Now this sits on a guide plate here. And then the whole assembly locates onto a base plate that fits onto the universal support on the Tormek and locks with this knob here. And you can see the hole on the base plate is elongated. This is for the Torlock system, which gives you incredible grip with minimal amount of effort from the knob. This little gauge sets the distance of the universal support from the stone and also sets the clearance angle. And there's also a little tube with special lubricant for the slides. So let's give it all a go and I'll show you just how easy it is to set up and use by sharpening this rather tatty 10 millimeter bit. The first stage is to use this template to set the universal support about 40 millimeters away from the stone. So slide into place, move in the universal support and lock up tight. Then fit the base plate the tour lock makes it very easy to get secure and mount the guide plate. You can see now the importance of the lubricant on the slide. It makes it so smooth to move from side to side. Now you have to fit the drill bit into the holder. 
fitting it so that the beveled edge points towards the wheel. The necessary protrusion is set using this stop on the guide plate. Again, it's not critical. Just make sure it is actually locked securely. There's really only one critical bit in this setting up process and that is you now have to rotate the bit until the cutting edges are parallel with these lines on the jig here. And that ensures that when you cut your primary and secondary facets they end up parallel. So just slacken it off a bit and rotate until those cutting edges are parallel. Now if you're sharpening really small bits this critical alignment can actually be quite difficult to see, in which case use the magnifier that's provided with the jig. That just sits on top of the holder. You can look through, the image is very, very much bigger. There's also an alignment pin inside that helps you get the cutting edge parallel to those marks. Well, that's alignment set. Just do a quick check to make sure you haven't altered the amount of protrusion and lock the drill bit up nice and tight. Now we need to set the clearance angle and this can vary depending on the diameter of the bit and the type of material you're going to be drilling but there is a chart of recommendations on the side of the template. Most drills of this diameter for general purpose work need a clearance angle of 14 degrees so tilt the plate until the two wings of the template at the 14 degree end just touch on the stone and lock it up tight. Point angle is nearly always 118 degrees but check this in the gauges on the side of the plate and then set it with this scale here. You'll see the scale actually goes from 150 degrees right round to 90 degrees but in reality you'll hardly ever use anything other than 118 degrees Okay, so now we're ready to go. Put the bit holder onto the guide plate so the lug touches the stop marked P for primary facet. Then wind in the setting screw until the bit is about one millimeter clear of the stone. And then start up. So now zero the cutting depth by just winding in until the bit just touches the stone and switch off. Now I can set the amount of metal I want to grind away from the tip. One revolution of the adjuster here moves the drill bit in half a millimeter. So I'm going to start with that. There is a marker on the barrel there so I can see how much of a turn I've put on. I put on one full revolution and then lock it with a locking nut there and now I'm ready to start grinding so just ease the drill bit back a fraction start up put your fingers in the recesses on the plate and slide the drill bit forward till it starts to cut and then move from side to side because of the slow revolution speed of the stone and the fact it's water cooled, you have complete control on this process and there's no sparks or burning. So a few wipes from side to side and eventually the cut will start tailing off. And quite quickly you get to a stage where there's only very intermittent contact, just the odd high spot on the stone. and you've effectively ground that facet to the required depth. So then just take the holder off, turn it over, make sure you're up against the P stop and then repeat the procedure for the other side. It's very quick unless you've got a lot of material to take away the drill bit is very blunt or badly damaged 
That's starting to tail off now. I'll take this off and have a look. See, we've ground the two primary facets. But these have come together in the middle to form a chisel point. We now need to convert this to a really sharp point by grinding on secondary facets. Once again, this is very straightforward. Just drop the plate down a little bit, put the drill holder back in place, but this time set it so the lug is in contact with a stop marked S. Then just raise the plate until the heel of the drill just touches on the stone and lock it up tight. And now to set some depth of cut, just turn this adjuster. I'm going to turn it a full turn, which will give me half a millimetre and see how we go with that. And then the grinding process is exactly the same. Just keep grinding forward until the lug engages on the stop and then turn over. Exactly the same as we did with the primary facet. Just about there now, just stop and have a look. Not quite there with the point, we just want to go a fraction further. So just wind on a little bit more on that stop and just repeat the procedure for both facets. It's only a fraction. Turn over. And there we are, a perfect four facet bit with a perfect centre point. Really is that easy. When you've finished, any burr can be removed on the leather honing wheel. And you've now got a precision ground and sharp bit which will drill a perfectly sized hole. If you're sharpening really small diameter bits it might be worth just reducing the coarseness of the stone using the stone grader. Knock it back to a thousand grit, it's just that little bit less aggressive than those really small diameter bits. You can however use a standard stone for sharpening tungsten carbide bits. These of course only need one primary facet so very quick, very easy to do. However, if they need a lot of serious reshaping or the very big diameter bits, it might be worth investing in a black stone instead. So that's the DBS22 drill sharpening jig. I know it's taken a while to show you and describe the sharpening process. In actual fact, once you get used to it, it's very quick and very simple. Also gives you complete versatility as regards the point and clearance angles. You should never again have to struggle forcing a blunt drill bit. You can also restore damaged bits. So as well as the convenience, it's going to save you a fortune in buying replacements. To my mind, it's worth a serious look. Till next time, bye bye for now.